Today we're making miniature gingerbread houses. One of them will be small enough to fit on the rim of a mug and the other one is even smaller. It'll fit on the top of a cupcake. Now you'll need a gingerbread cookie dough recipe for this. Now what you're watching is me making some gingerbread cookie dough. This recipe, which I'm going to go over very quickly here on the video, is the same recipe I used for my gingerbread log cabin video last year. So I, I will provide a link to a video tutorial to that recipe and I'll also put it in the description box below if you want to go take a look. It's a very easy versatile gingerbread cookie recipe that works very well when you want to build uh, houses with it. So there's the finished dough ball. I'm going to cut that in half and I refrigerate my dough for about an hour before I use it by putting it into plastic bags. Once the dough is chilled, I take a portion of it, put it between layers of waxed paper or parchment paper, and then you need to roll it out. You roll it out a little bit thinner than you would for normal size gingerbread houses because you, these are very small. Roll it out to about an eighth of an inch. Now, for the template that I used, I found this template at uh, notmartha.org, and I'll give you a link in the description box for that. All I did was print out this template right as it was from the website, and I cut out the pieces for the larger gingerbread house. And for the tinier one, I shrank it down on my scanner and printer to make some little tiny ones. Then you take the template pieces, put them on the rolled out dough. That's why it's important that you want your dough to be even thickness through the whole piece. And then using a sharp knife, just cut around each of those little pieces. Now I should mention here that for the very tiny gingerbread house, I will put up on my website and there'll be a link in the description box for that, for the exact dimensions of that teeny tiny one if you want to recreate that one. So I tried to put all the pieces as close as possible to use up all the dough. And then once your pieces are all cut out, I put this in the freezer for about 20 minutes to chill it thoroughly. And that way it makes it so much easier to remove the excess dough on the edges. And then you just have to peel that off and it should just peel off very nicely. So all that you'll be left with is your cutout pieces that you want to keep. All those scraps, all you have to do is put them back together into a ball and then you can re-roll it and continue to make pieces. Now I took all the cutout pieces, I put them on another cookie sheet covered with a silicone mat or you need to cover it with parchment. And then I bake this at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes until the dough was set and it was lightly browned. Now to glue all these pieces together, you're going to use something called Royale frosting. And Royale frosting is something that is made with egg whites. It's frosting made with egg whites. And I use meringue powder, which is like dried egg whites. And I will put a link as well in the description for a small batch of Royal icing, which is really nice if you don't want to make a gigantic pile of it. So there's two tablespoons of meringue powder in there quarter cup of water. I just stirred it around to make sure it was completely dissolved and then switch it to a larger bowl because I realized my bowl wasn't big enough and then beat it on high with an electric mixer until it started to froth up just like it would regular egg whites. And then I started to add the powdered sugar, about two cups of powdered sugar beating in between each addition until you're looking for something that makes stiff peaks. You want it thick enough so it's not going to drip all over but thin enough so when you put it in a piping bag to use it to make your gingerbread houses that uh, it'll flow through the piping bag. So I put it in a piping bag, as you can see here, with a little writing tip. And then I started assembling the gingerbread houses. This is the larger one that goes on the mug. You put a little bit of frosting on the end piece, and then you add the two side walls, and then another end piece. And if you'll notice, the side walls are inside of the two end pieces. And this frosting is fantastic. It sticks those two pieces of cookie together extremely well and it dries very quickly. It's a lot of fun to work with if you've never used it before. I put a little bead of the frosting between the roof pieces to hold them together. And now I'm going to assemble the teeny tiny gingerbread house. Same method, end pieces with the wall and then adding the other end. These gingerbread pieces here are a little bit overbaked. They probably shouldn't be quite so dark, but when I made this batch, I forgot to put my kitchen timer on when I put them in the oven. And I always put a kitchen timer on when I bake cookies because they can get away from you so quickly. 
Anyway, there's the little tiny house uh, all assembled. They're actually pretty easy to put together and they're kind of fun to do actually. And then the best part, which is the decorating, and you can do this any way you want, of course. One good way of getting ideas is doing a Google image search of gingerbread houses, and you will have a million photos to look at if you need some ideas of how to put it all together. I'm using just some tiny little candies to stick on the roof. I did a couple of multicolored ones and then I did a couple that had white and silver themes to them and you'll see that in the photos towards the end. The royal icing has a tendency to dry very quickly so if you have any open containers of royal icing make sure that it's covered and refrigerated so it doesn't dry out on you while you're decorating your gingerbread houses. Now for the teeny tiny gingerbread houses I was going to put those on cupcakes. I found the regular size cupcake to be a little bit too small so I baked up a batch of these jumbo sized cupcakes and I'm going to dip one into some white sprinkles just to make it look like snow and I'm going to place one of the little gingerbread houses on that one and then for the other I dipped it into some white uh, coarse white sugar and I'm adding these little silver balls that, which are little candies silver colored candies and people ask me if these things are edible. Well, it depends where you live. Um, where I come from, they are considered to be edible, but places like uh, California, they're considered to be non-toxic, but not edible because they contain a little bit of silver. So you'll have to kind of take, make up your own mind if you want to consume these or not. And there is the finished result with the white and silver cottage. And a few photos of the cookies that go on the rim of the mug. They fit quite nicely on the rim of the mug. You can vary the size of the opening of the door to fit the size of the mug that you have. But the one half inch uh, door opening that was on the website was perfect for the mugs that I had. And there are the cupcake, cupcake ones. I really think these are adorable. If you don't want to make gingerbread, you could even probably make similar cottages by using some graham wafer crackers as well. I think this one was my favorite one. I found these little green candy trees to put around it, which I think added a lot to it. And I wouldn't want to make like a hundred of these, but making a few of them was a lot of fun. And it's something that kids could help you out with, especially with the decorating part. So why don't you give them a try?